Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode and today we're going to look at something to do with laser engraving and laser cutting. So with the holidays arriving, I've been doing some Christmas patterns uh, with my laser machines and in particular I've been having quite some work from this one client who loves her designs in colorful African fabric. So this video is just a slideshow of some of the designs that I've made over the holidays and probably uh, give you a couple of tips on what you can do in case you want to make similar designs. Okay, to start off, I'm assuming you have a laser cutter with you. So the laser cutting machine that I'm using uh, in the workshop is mostly the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. It has a 20 watt laser head. Of course, there are also other higher watts laser heads that you can use. Uh, for instance, this is the 60 watt uh, laser head. I'm not sure if there is anything higher than the 60 watt for the Creality Pro. So these designs uh, were made in Illustrator and then they were converted to SVG and then uh, imported into Lightburn. I usually use Lightburn for all my projects uh, because I have found it to be the most uh, user-friendly uh, laser cutting or laser engraving software plus it's compatible with many of the machines that are on the market so I will recommend anyone if you're just getting started uh, probably you should check out Lightburn. Of course, there's also another option of, of the laser GRBL, but I don't have experience with that software, so I just leave it at that. After creating the design uh, in Illustrator or in your favorite graphics editing software, you can import it into Lightburn and get ready to start cutting your patterns. Now, I would like us to talk about the materials. So for this uh, project, I was using strawboard. So strawboard is just a type of heavy duty paper uh, that you can make at home or you can buy at your local depot store. So what happens is uh, I take the African fabric and glue it on the strawboard. When I've glued it, I'll give it some time for it to dry. I've realized any time I want to cut a material that has some glue in it, there's usually a problem with the laser beam passing through the material. The glue makes the laser beam, uh, it obstructs the laser beam and apart from that, it leads to a lot of burn marks. So if you're going to glue the material on your on your straw board just make sure you give it enough time to dry I usually just let the materials dry out in the Sun and after a couple of uh, maybe half an hour I come and work on them but apart from straw board you can also uh, you can also glue the fabric on wood or any other materials that your laser cutter can cut but gluing it on wood, I think it will be a waste of material unless you're really making something that you want to be very, very durable. So for this project, I used straw board and I think it worked out just fine. So for the straw board, after gluing the material on the straw board, I just have to put them in your laser machine and let the machine do the cutting. Of course, depending on the size of your straw board, you might need to resize it so that it fits in the bed of your machine. And then just make sure that it stays on the bed flat because in case the head uh, hits the straw board, then your patterns can be misaligned and you end up wasting your materials. So that is something that you might want to check. Usually when I put the materials on the honeycomb bed, I have to secure them with uh, uh, cello tape or just any tape. Also have a couple of uh, tires that I use just to keep the materials down. 
just make sure that your laser head is not going to touch your material or else your design can be disrupted and you end up uh, wasting your material so when the laser machine cuts uh, the material that's of course the easy process just keep an eye on the machine so that nothing out of the ordinary happens and when the cutting is done uh, you'll have to do some post processing I usually realize if I put a lot of power then the edges end up getting charred and this gives me a lot of work during the post-production process after the cutting I usually just take a brush a clean brush and lightly brush on the sides as well as on all the openings of the designs to remove uh, the burn marks as well as any uh, chaff that might be there so that is usually the post-production process and uh, in case you find out some parts of the fabric have gotten out because they usually do then you can just glue them back inside and with that you'll have finished your project and I'm sure your client will be happy so basically that's an overview of how I go about uh, designing the snowflakes and cutting them with my machine and finally delivering to the client I hope you enjoyed these uh, colorful snow patterns and if you want an in-depth tutorial where you can see me doing the step-by-step -step process let me know in the comment section below and I will see what I can do of course if you found the video helpful I'll appreciate if you give it a like and share it with someone that you feel uh, will find it helpful until next time keep making keep laser engraving and keep doing great stuff